Ow. At 209, you're going to have to call back in a second. 209, good morning. What's 209. going on, Robot? Hey, can you hear me okay? Hey. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right, so speaker. So this is my microphone. This is my speaker. I got you. Um, let's see. Grow Boss. Uh, blah, 209. Six million dollar grow house. Um, whew, there's a lot of people. Um, good morning. Okay. Good morning. Yes, sir. I'm still setting up my stage. What can I do for you? I got a quick question for you. Okay. Buying, buying feminized seeds. Can you clone feminized seeds? Yes, sir. Feminized seeds the are a regular. Plant. Sorry, say that again. The actual plant from a uh, yes. feminized seed. Can you clone those? Yes, sir. Yes, you can. Think about it like an autoflower. The problem is if you try to clone an autoflower, what happens is you end up... Uh, you end up, okay, hang on a sec. You end up with a plant. Like um, like uh, when you do uh, autoflower, if you take a clone from the autoflower, it's as old as the plant. So you can't clone an autoflower, but you can clone feminized because it's just female. Does it take any of the strength or any of the chances of it being hermaphrodite or anything? No, it won't change the hermaphrodite or anything like that. It will, it will, the only thing that'll change, um, it won't change making it a hermaphrodite. If you have a problem, is it susceptible to being a hermaphrodite? Yes, it's susceptible to being a hermaphrodite. But uh, it would only be if you did something, like if you did something wrong. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, if, the, if it was going to do it, it would do it. It wouldn't be anything that that you could control if you had a good grow. Okay. Okay. Yes. So sounds uh, good. And my yeah. other question is, I'm six. I'm in my last three weeks of flowering, and my nugs just don't seem to be developing. They just seem to be just sitting there. What do I would you have think to cause that. I would have to look at a picture. That's not really. That's not any information that I could work with. My bud has stalled. Really doesn't. I mean, did it stall because you killed it with too much water? Did it stall because you killed it with too much light? Did it stall because you killed it with too many nutrients? I mean, you, there's no information to be had from what you just said. So there really isn't any way I could I could solve the problem for you. Well, I know that it's too. I have too much light just for the simple fact that my plants are in in the light right now, and I've been having a problem with that from day one. Um, I'm new to this whole uh, uh, basically hydro setup. I'm I'm that guy <laughs> that you that you that you read about in your your book. <laughs> sure, sure. So tr I'm trying to I'm trying to change that and not be that guy, but uh, uh, it's kind of too late. I think I just need to get through this this grow and, and start over and try to maintain the uh the actual water that i'm giving i think i just overfed it and you gave it way too much water so there really won't be anything that i can do to help you out because the best thing you could do would be to do it right i can't fix that until i mean you have to fix that it's not something i, I can't give you that one you got to start from the beginning and get it all right from the get-go you know what i mean yeah 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 all right, let me take another caller. I appreciate Perfect. that. You keep working on it. Perfect. Yes, sir. 206, good morning. Hello? Yes, 206, good morning. Oh, okay, sorry. So what is it I can do for you? 206, are you on? Okay, so I've got yellow for my live stream. I got my mic. All right, I'm going to hang up on the caller. I got live stream. Um, okay, so what's going on? Listen, there is a lot going on at the store today. So I'm working this out. Okay, so the live stream health. What, what, okay, viewers may be experiencing minor issues. Why do I have minor? 
Oh, I know why, because my guy was here yesterday. Good morning, 442. Good morning, Groboss. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. I um, had a quick question for you. So I um, picked up some um, clones from up north, northern California. I uh, got them back. They had, um, it, it turned out they had uh, root aphids. Um, I tried to uh, kind of knock them back with the uh, SNS-203. I, um, I basically ended up culling the whole, the whole batch that I got from up north, which was quite a few. Um, I have, I'm only in veg, no flower. I have uh, a bunch of moms in the room and I have some newly transplanted um, um, babies that are about, let's just say about a week and a half old, or about a week, week, week or so, week and a half old is a transplant. Um, all of the infected ones or the ones that came from up north are gone. Um, I started to scour the, uh, the newly uh, transplanted uh, babies that are about a week to week and a half old and they have now uh, rooted through I'm, I'm in a Rockwell cubes, by the way. They have uh, rooted through and uh, look great, um, but I have picked up the cubes and I have noticed on uh, maybe maybe about 10 out of out of 200 or so, I've noticed some of the root aphids uh, babies there on the roots again. Um, could you give me any, I know that you're, you're gonna recommend the SNS-203, uh, but could you give me an application strategy to uh, beat these root aphids? Okay, so like root aphids, are like the worst thing ever so i mean just so you know root aphids are, are are like literally they're like the worst thing ever so it makes it okay it makes it tough to solve that problem because i'm going to tell you like all you could do is use it once a week like literally forever um it, it's a tough one um because they are so resilient and all you can sort of do is fight them and fight them and fight them until you either get rid of that crop and they're not in the next one or or and you might very you may very well have to set up now i know it like 203 is that one but you may want to step up to something more aggressive i mean you may have to step up to uh azimax here i'll show you them let's see um okay. let's see what do we, what do we got here like mm -hmm. uh there's okay so think about it in terms of like there's two different severities. One is fun and like SNS. So here's the product, right? Like this is what we're talking about. 217 is for spider mites. Um, I don't think I have, I think I'm sold out of 203. But once you want, you're going to want like, you're going to want literally like you're going to want like an Azimax or you're going to want like a promise from NPK. You're going to have to probably do something with a little more insecticide in it than you would normally because you haven't been getting rid of them. So you may want to try a two-step approach as well. And you may want to try something a little more significant um, than you were doing too. Okay. And remember... So you're going to recommend most likely... You're going to recommend most likely uh, maybe Asmax and what else was that? Um, I The other one was Promise the, by NPK, but I really think you're going to end up with Asmax. That'll probably be the one that ends up doing it for you. But you're going to have to do it like, you know, it's a couple mm -hmm. times. I mean, you're going to have to do it and do it and do it. Um, one of the things I always caution you guys on when you use any of that stuff is try it on one plant first. And I believe the Asmax is yeah. two tablespoons per gallon. So you might want to do one tablespoon per gallon and try it like that. Wait 24 hours. Got if it. the plant doesn't die, apply it to the crop. But I think that you're going to, uh, I think that you're going to have to fight this battle in a way that you're not used to because there is nothing more pervasive than, uh, than root aphids. Okay. Um, one, one other question is, uh, do you know if the Azimax, um, if, if, if this eventually, if this crop goes all the way to uh, testing and concentrate in California, do you know if that Azimax is going to come up and show up as a pesticide that they say, oh, no, this, this whole crop has to be tossed out because of the Azimax? Okay. I will tell you that the Nevada Park Department of Agriculture, the NDA, came to my store and said would literally brought in two pieces of paper stapled with a business card on it. The dude came in with the badge. Someone comes into a hydro store with the badge. You know what I mean? Like it's already a problem. So the guy comes in, 
And he's like, I'm from the Nevada. He holds it up. You know, I mean, like bottom corner, he holds it up. I'm from the Nevada Department of Agriculture. And I just wanted to go over a few of the insecticides you have on your shelf. And I was like, okay. Takes this paper out and gives it to me and says, everything listed here is approved by the Nevada Department of Agriculture for the use on marijuana that is going to be tested for sale in a facility. And the SNS products and the Azimax, which also happens to be Omri listed, they were both approved on there. Now, is that real? I have no fucking idea if it's real. But I do know that the Nevada Department of Agriculture guy came to my store and said that we're good here. So uh, there's that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did that answer your questions? Okay. It did. Hey, Grow Boss, thank you so much for uh, for taking my call, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Keep up the keep up the good work, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the encouragement, too. Okay. All right. So I had my uh, website guy in yesterday, and apparently what I've done is I bought the 920 camera. So when you go down the rabbit hole and you try to do a show like mine, and we're going to get to more callers. If you got a cannabis question, um, call in. It's 84 Grow Boss. Uh, I've got this store cam right here. But if you look up there, I've got a new Grow Boss cam. That is the 920 HD. So we're now getting Grow Boss in HD. But the problem is I also use it for my... So when I go over here and I want to do like a demonstration of a product, remember how blurry it was before? Well, now it's crisp. Look at that. It's super crisp. Blam. You can check it out. Look at the names on the bottles. The problem is that camera up there, whenever I adjust it, that one adjusts as well. My website guy was like, oh, my, my webcast guy was like, oh, no, you can buy this. So I bought two. We hooked him up and he's like, see, it works. Okay, so I used it this morning and it clearly doesn't work. Unfortunately, I purchased four more of those already. So now I've got four of these 920 cameras, six total at 50 bucks. Dude, I've got 14 cameras and we're using seven of them. Yeah. Okay, so I had another call. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to get high for a minute. There is no rush here. Listen, this is a free show. The camera's off. I look tiny in the whole scheme of things. Medical Marijuana Investment Club stocks. Queen B. Um, thanks for the site, Pips. Asmax works on thrips. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We had Irma. We were talking about that last week in uh, Florida and Texas. New York, John, good morning. Thrips on my balls. You're going to have to dip them in. Uh, I would say if you got thrips on your balls, you should probably use 203 and not Azmax. Good morning, Intin. Listen, I'm just going to smoke cannabis here for a minute. It's going to be a live stream show of me smoking cannabis. Oh, my God, last week. Oh, can we talk? Can we talk about last week? Oh, my God. I am so old. It took me 48 hours to recover from uh, from last week. Listen, I got to tell you, I like Jack K. I know some of you guys were like, I got more emails about last Sunday's show about me sitting here getting high than any show before. Okay, so we're streaming. We got this going. We got that going. Um, woo. Um, oh yeah, we had that one guy who I told to float his plant out on a raft last week. Why are my first true leaves pointing downward? See, you ask a question like that, um, dirty dog. And I got to ask you like, you know what I mean? Like, why does my car sound like it's revving too high? But you don't tell us the RPM. You don't tell us any of the ratios. You don't give any information. So I'm going to tell all you guys, and this is a big deal. If you ask a shitty question, you're going to get a shitty answer. Unless it's someone like me that says, I'm not going to answer the question. But think about that. If you go to a hydro store who's pretty much business is to sell you equipment. And, and the problem that you're going you're gonna to ask like some random question with not enough detail. I mean, ask yourself. Ask yourself it's your job. Whatever it is you do. If you don't, if you don't get the information you need to do your job, how are you going to make a decision? You see what I'm saying? Like, 
you, you say stuff. Yeah, William Stryker. 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 It looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Too much light and too much water possibly. See what I mean like Stryker? That's brilliant. That's what I would have said. Too much light, too much water, too many nutrients. You put it in a hot mix. Why? Because we didn't lose him and hopefully the plants. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. We didn't lose it. <laughs> oh, Hey, listen, I'm the Grow Boss. If you like the videos, you can always buy my book, right? It's eBay, Amazon, or from your local hydro store or thegrowboss.com. And of course, like this video. Oh, you know what? You know what I need from you guys, actually? As long as I got you guys here, let me, uh, I need you guys to do that thing where you post up reviews on my, on my store. Because I had some, like, elderly female call me asking all sorts of questions about and i'm like listen this isn't the kind she wanted to know about the school and i'm like yeah come on in we do it and then she started asking questions and i'm like yeah this is where we sort of lose it on the phone right because um it's too many questions so like five minutes later like uh, i get a one star review pops up so if you guys wouldn't mind oh come on man what is what's let's see i gotta copy this link put it in my live stream, hit enter, paste it, hit enter. What? What? Oh, come on, man. What? Uh, so I have a link to my Google business, but apparently today it's not going to let me paste it. And uh, God, it's not going to let me do it. Okay. Anyway, so if you guys get the opportunity to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, I also do the Cannabis Information Network, where it's a little more business-oriented, and we've been talking about that. Um, I'll work on getting this uh, Google thing postable, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Goddamn, dealing with the public sucks. Okay seedlings 1.6 under five no newts yet because two weeks old maybe but you say no newts yet you say no newts yet dirty dog and yet you watch my videos of you watch uh okay so i don't need this one but you watch my videos of literally like bah, what are we doing here Oh, I am off this morning. Exit full screen. Okay, so here we go. So we want the great root race. And and here's a bunch of videos of me showing you pretty much I fed them before I inoculate, before we even put the seeds in there. So all I'm suggesting is that, and I've started doing this in the store too. Like uh, your question is, um seedlings 1.7 inch under 5 f 5 under 5 f i don't know what that is no newts yet because two weeks old maybe water only when dry um um thank you intent so my observation here is like here's a video that um I, I made where i'm literally showing you how to feed so one of the things that i've started doing in the store is this i've like literally just oh you know what let's uh crop this so i've actually just started like i i oh i started using the words experimentation and experience that's construction construction's kicking ass i can't wait to show you the back let's talk about experimentation and experience see if you want to learn how to grow there's two ways you can do this you can experiment and spend years failing like most people until you work it out or give up or you can gain experience see now experience is what you learn on your way to success experiment is what you do on your way to selling me back your equipment <laughs> if you want to sell me back your equipment experiment i had a customer come in 23 year old dude comes in with his girlfriend who looks like she's 21 they've got a baby they both say they want this for medical and they don't have any money and i said great don't grow so we go through the normal nonsense he's got cfls he's doing this he's doing that i'm like listen dude this is medical 
I'm, I don't have any answers for you if you make this up as you go along. However, if you take this Mondi Dome and you put it... Dude, we had to move everything around because of construction. You take this Mondi Dome and you take this two foot single bulb T5 and you tape it to here and you feed with Clonex solution. I can tell you that a thousand growers a month come through my store, a thousand growers a year come through my store, do it like this. Now, I can tell you exactly what's gonna happen if you start seeds or you start clones in here provided your seeds were, your seeds were viable and your clones were healthy. I know what's gonna happen because I've seen this a thousand times. So I know what's gonna happen just like when I step out of that ambulance and I look at you, I already know. And so what we're talking about here is is like our confidence level. What is my confidence level when people follow just this, when they do it just like all my growers do it? Dude, confidence is very high. So when I look at you, when you look at me and you say, well, I'm experimenting and I go, that's great. And they ask me a question, I go, I don't know. It's your experiment. If you want to know how to do this, I'm here for you. If you want to know how to experiment, I, I don't, there's nothing I can do for you. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Knock yourself out, dude. My store's here. I've got sick deals for you. Tell me what you want, but don't ask me any questions because if you change one thing, everything down and up the pipe changes, right? You change your light, size changes, distance changes, hood changes, space changes, CO2, heat changes. Name me one thing that doesn't change everything else. The number is 84 Grow Boss. You should like the chat, like the video, subscribe to the channel. So I've got this going. <laughs> uh, so I like Jackie. I thought that guy's got so much personality. Like I had that much personality when I was younger, except I was so obnoxious. It got beat out of me, rightly so. And so insert, I don't know what monster cropping is. AZ420. Is it, do you, do you just, is it like 24 hours of straight cropping? I know what cropping is. I know what super cropping is. I know what topping and lollipopping and shaping your plants is. I know what thimming is, but I don't know what monster cropping is. Yeah, and literally experimenting. See, that's my point, Daniel and uh, and great Nate. Oh, Jackie. Dude, good morning, Jack. Hey, 420. Dude, it was a treat to have you on the show. I liked that show. There was more emails about that show, Jack K, than anything else. Um, so I, what I'm suggesting here is that is, is that is um, is that there's a very narrow trajectory of success when it comes to growing cannabis. In fact, one of the things that a caller had spoke to me about uh, a helpline caller during the week was that I should be doing more case studies. So that's one of the things I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to get on grow diaries and like, we're going to do case study, like, uh, just straight, like, uh, grow I don't know what it is with my internet. My live stream is, is not as good as it usually is. My webcast guy came in, we've been setting this up. I'm trying to get, remember, we got all that construction going on in the back. Um, I'm going to make my store the best display store ever. I mean, what else am I going to do, man? I'm the grill boss. I'm, st I'm here in the store. So I'm never going to go back to any other job. Like, I'm going to die behind this desk getting high with you guys. Monster Croppin is using your girlfriend as a scarecrow. That's super sweet. <laughs> I have, I didn't have the time today to get prepped for uh, Tom's pictures, but I will, because we've been so busy here, but I will work on that for tomorrow's show. Yeah, dude, it's not a bad job. Sitting here getting high with you guys, totally not a bad job, right? I mean, like, you know, listen, I would be, a, if, if at all possible, I would literally like, dude, be, a, I would literally go back to being like, paramedic nurse for the rest of paramedic for the rest. I wouldn't even be a nurse. Uh, 
Just paramedic. That was the best fucking job. You know how much I like your guys' nonsense, breaking your plants and killing them with too much light and too much water and too many nutrients? You know how much fun I make fun of you guys? Imagine me walking out of the back of the ambulance, fire department pushing some guy up, holding his stomach like this, and me going, oh, a case of vaginitis. And a guy that's in so much pain rolls his head over to me and laughs. I'm like, dude, vaginitis is tough. What hospital would you like to go to? I mean, your nonsense, as long as it's not my nonsense, because I got to tell you, my back hurts so bad. I hate my nonsense. Uh, oh, that Bud Smasher? I, th I don't know how much the Bud Smasher was. Jackie will tell you. Jack K will tell you. You got to say it right. Sorry, Jack K. All right. Um, let's see. Great Nate. I've never killed anything I've grown. It's slacking. Then you're doing good. Sand in the vagina. <laughs> ah. Oh, my God. Tiny heart syndrome. Oh, listen. You don't need, if I show up in my ambulance, you don't need me to be your friend, AZ420. You want me to do my job. Oh, dude, my webcast guy comes in yesterday. We're going to start green screening my other book. I've got a, I've got a book. <laughs> we killed him. <laughs> oh, magic man. <clears throat> we were talking about live streaming this show to a whole bunch of platforms. And one of the things we're going to start doing is green screening my paramedic book. Because, I mean, you know, judging by my behavior, you know how my relationship with the company ended, right? So it could be no other way. I think I'm the best. And... You know, generally, I'm, I'm up there. And they think that all paramedics should behave a certain way. And listen, it's a rough fucking job. And if you don't laugh it off, watching people die is tough. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I can't grow. Yes, I could grow hair. I can grow hair, but it's only this thing around. And it ages me. I've got, like, none of this and some of that. Dude, that, that, it's called Vital Signs on eBay and Amazon. The most brutal book you've ever read. I don't do it like the uh, like the other fire department guys or the other paramedics that wrote their book. Absolutely not. So we're going to start making this live action green screen of it. Anyway, stall and balling, dude. You guys are so fucking funny. Rusty shoe dick, dude. You get a bunch of smart fucking people making comments. And, and like, you know, you suddenly get to the crux of the matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live stream, live stream. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Denali. I appreciate uh, your humble opinion. Here, you know what we'll do is we'll do, I'll do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I, I don't know how much the one, Jack, you'll, Jack K will tell you. He's got a, a dude, microbe life. Okay. You know what? Let me see on YouTube. They've had this video on YouTube where nematodes, nematode, nematodes in soil. They've been playing this commercial. Oh, here we go. How nematodes damage plants. They've been playing this commercial where it comes on. Nematodes are stealing 10% of your crop while you sleep. They're going into your wallet and taking, oh shit. How gross is that? Dude. <gasps> Dude. What are they saying? It's from the root system. Infested plants suffer and show poor growth. Oh, that's why his, uh, that's why his first wrong. leaves are, uh, that's why that guy's first leaves are uh, curling. He's got is applied to the soil via a drip irrigation system. Dude. Allowing it to precisely target the root system. Treated nematodes rapidly become paralyzed and remain needle-shaped until they die <coughs> off. Oh, the little... After the fluopuram has been applied... Dude, when you look at those things, when you look at those two shapes, do you see the shape? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Dude, look at those two shapes. Good grief. Everything in nature. You know what I mean? After the fluopuram has been applied, Bayer's biological nematocide, BioAct, destroys the remaining nematode eggs. Like fluopuron, BioAct can be directly applied via a oh. drip irrigation system. The fungus starts to parasitize the nematode ah. eggs and prevents the larvae from hatching and infecting new roots. 
The healthy root system enables good plant growth and high... Dude, I can't believe that you have nematodes, skid plate. Um, um, if you're going to talk Johnny Dabber, if you're talking silica, you add whatever the bottle says, because silica changes pH, but it doesn't increase ppm. It's not an ion from a salt like that, I don't think. Dude, Dune. I, I, I love that movie, Dune. Okay, so... Um, what I'm suggesting is like you asked something about microbes. Okay, so one of the guys here asked something about microbes. Let's see who it was. Jack K420 told me, uh, you should always be saying people's names. And he's right. Who doesn't like, dude, even on like Romper Room? I lost it when that chick said my name one morning once. She was just like, oh my God, I see the grow boss. And I was just, I just lost it. Seven year old little grow boss, first floor, parents above him. Okay, um, it's not a tumor, not my nug smasher, Jackie. Uh, we were talking about the store last week, UK. Let's see, I have a question. How much silica? Bah. Anyway, so my thought on microbes is this: in the, in the, I'll tell you everything you need to know. I'll tell you everything you need to know about microbes right here. That'll. Oh my God, it's making me stand up. Okay. So I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about microbes all at once. Because oddly enough, I have been asked this question like four times in the last couple of days. So let me grab this. Let me, whoa, let me grab a couple of things from the store. Um, okay, we probably want... Blam. Okay, so let's talk about microbes. And I've told you guys before how they live on the roots. And I've showed you guys like the pictures of how microbes, and I made the videos of the great root race and how the roots expand the root zone. Um, oh, Mammoth P, uh, listen, Mammoth P is great, but it's no greater than any root product. I mean, unless you in particular were going to test multiple things to see if there was a slight percentage what you want is a high quality root maximizer like clonex that's what you want is something high quality that's what you're looking for okay so this one here um let me grab a video hang on a sec grow boss one boom size it down listen you know why i make you guys watch me fix stuff because later when I need to fix stuff, you won't know I'm doing it. So I'm practicing on you guys. You guys are like, oh, dude, we've got so much stuff coming up on other networks. We're doing like we're doing a, a, an aggressive news show, like uh, not quite so friendly like you see on like TV. Oh, we've got some interesting stuff happening. My, my webcast guy. OK, um, so here's my observation about microbes. Microbes come in a couple of different ways. They come in they come in teas like this they come in okay i want to grab one more two more things this is what i meant to grab the first time okay so microbes come in a couple of different ways and there's two types of teas there is a microbial tea and a compost tea now a compost tea by definition has microbes in it it has to because there's microbes in the poop now, a microbial tea that you make without compost or nutrients does not have nutrients. So, microbial tea, microbes only. Compost tea, microbes and nutrients. Okay? There's a couple of versions of this. This is a powdered, this is powdered microbes. They are, they are inactive until activated. There are two forms. There is soluble and there is granular. Now, granular takes two to three weeks to dissolve. So with granular, when you're doing a transplant, you're going to sprinkle some in to the transplant zone, just like you would um, Bushmaster, uh, the chores episode, episode $900. five, Bushmaster, with Bushmaster is transplanting. And while he's, oh, this is clones and clones 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 okay so the bushmaster is transplanting and when he goes oh here he's shaping them so he shapes them all up and then when he goes from transplant into a new bucket 
into a new bucket, he's going to add a little bit of the Clonex, the Clonex granular here, the root maximizer for Clonex granular. Why? Because you want them around the root zone so you know that you're getting the microbes right on the root zone over the next couple of weeks. But let's be clear, the microbes in the granular are like the microbes in the powder in that neither of them are active. Now you could take either of these and you could just as easily make a tea out of them. And from there, they become active. Now, if you have a T, they're active. So if you make a T, and there are two types of microbes in here, oxygen reducers and sulfur reducers, and if you make a T that you buy off the shelf, you're gonna end up with a 30-day shelf life because 50% of the microbes are gone, they say, in like 72 hours. I don't know what the number is, but I'm sure that if you activate them, that they're going to die, right? Now, Orca from Great White, these are in stasis and they will not be activated until you thin out the solution that they're in by putting them in water. So you put one mil into a gallon, the stasis solution dissipates, dissipates, the concentration decreases, and then the microbes become active. Now, this is soluble because sometimes the powders will clog the jets on your, like on a turbo cloner, like on a turbo cloner, the jets, are, uh, the jets will clog from the powders and you would never use a soluble. You would want to use a li liquid like the Bushmaster did when I showed you the Bushmaster and turbo clone. Like, uh, okay, let me show you the... Uh, let me see if I grabbed it. The Bushmaster and turbo clone video. This one here... You know, I show you at the end, I show you how he takes the clones. I show you how he takes the cuttings and dips them in Clonex. I show you all the roots and everything as they go. Um, and then, boom, we come to this. Holy mackerel. That's a holy mackerel. That's, day, that's not day 14. That's clearly a mistake. This is day 14. Woo, doggy. So that's what microbes do both positive and negative, right? Because the plant needs the right amount of nutrients, but if you use too many, you kill your shit. Plant needs microbes, but if you use too many, okay. So teas you have to be careful of. That's why I buy them four bottles at a time and not buy a case, because what am I gonna do with a tea on my shelf for six months? Okay, this lasts a long time on the shelf because it is in suspension. Now, if you wanna make a tea, there are lots of ways to make a tea. You take some soluble microbes, you put them in water and there's no nutrients, so you can't use too many. But they're not gonna activate and even if they did, they would need some energy source. So all you have to do is take any sweet product, any mag sulfur product with carbohydrates in it. You could literally throw sugar in there. That doesn't matter in terms of, in terms of the sugar and the energy for the, for the microbes. What, I, what I'm looking to point out is the whole reason that you're using the microbes is to, is depending on which ones you buy, is depending on how you want them activated. Because if you buy a quality microbe like Clonex Root Maximizer, what are we talking about here? They've got all the brands in the back. They've got all the microbes that you need. Even in like uh, mycorrhizae from Great White, I think there's four endos or ectos or something in there. There's four. There are some strains that just have one. And I know you guys are like adding alfalfa and you're trying to come up with these secret recipes for microbes. But listen, this one's got them all in there. And even if you found a couple more, I mean, there are, there are a lot. There are a lot of, a lot of microbes in there. Uh, look at all this. I'm just suggesting that, that there comes this point where maybe perhaps even more and more P Jammer, good morning. Listen, P Jammer's been helping me out getting the store ready. Um, what I'm suggesting is, is that if you, have a, if you have a root problem, you could sprinkle micro powder on top. Well, this, if you just sprinkled micro powder on top, it will leach into the, into the zone and they'll activate over a couple of days and they'll leach in. But if you looked at like the profile, the most microbes would be at the top and it would quickly fall off into the root zone. Now, if you dissolve them, so you, let's say you get a gallon of water, you put like, you know, three fingers at the bottom of some warm water and you put your microbes in and you stir it up until the powder isn't sitting on top and it's fully saturated. Then you add the rest of the gallon and you, you splash up all your plants with them. Well, 
you know that that that's going to get a far deeper penetration into the soil profile than it would without it. So you got like we watched this nematode thing. Um, we watched the nematode thing uh, into the root zone. Into the root zone. We watch this nematode thing. And what we tell, when I talk about the soil profile, I mean, here is the top of the soil, but your roots are way down here. So if you sprinkle microbes on top of your roots, on top of the soil, then getting them onto the roots is not as effective as if you made a tea or you added liquid um, or you swirled it in a one gallon jug and you know what I mean? And dissolve them and then put them in there. Now, if you want a bioactive tea, you would take some couple of gallons of water and air stone you would add you wouldn't add soluble why i mean granular because granular is meant to dissolve over a couple of weeks so it stays right there in the root zone because that's what we're talking about if you look at the soil profile um you know what maybe i can best depict it with this if we look at like uh if we look if we think about it in terms of if we think about it in terms of the soil profile. So here is, nope. Here is our tree. Here is our root. Nope. Here is our root zone. And as it gets deeper this way, what we're talking about is how far you can penetrate into the root zone. I'm just suggesting that if you were to, if you were to take your microbes and spray them across the, and drizzle them across the top like this in powder form, I think that your root zone penetration would look something like this. I think if you were to make a one gallon jug, I think you would have a, a root zone penetration that looked more like this. So if you were to make a tea, whether you pour that into a one gallon jug or you take some of the Clonex root maximizer and you dissolve it in a little bit of water so it doesn't spill over the sides and then you pour some more water in and you splash each one up. I'm just saying that this is what we're talking about in terms of penetration because the bulk of the root zones and all the pictures that we look at really seem to be here. and. And, and, and frankly, if, if you notice this right here, it looks like the exact same thing as if we were to describe the top of our plant. And what do I always tell you? Whatever happens above ground happens below ground and you can't have a top without a bottom. So all I'm suggesting is that when you think about this, just think about this in terms of a canopy, because frankly, I don't care if your canopy is up here or your canopy is below the root zone. What we're trying to do is we're trying to infect this whole area here inoculate the whole root zone with the microbes so I don't believe that putting powder on top and watering through it is nearly as effective as 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 see what I'm saying as pouring it in now the sugar once the microbes get active from the water the sugar is their food source I don't particularly care what sugar you use but there's mag sulfur in this so it's good for your plant too and you can add and you can add uh, Clonex uh, solution to it as well. So this is the both the microbes and the product that I'm selling, and it's the use of the product because if you've overwatered, I mean, what are you going to do? Sprinkle microbes on the top? I mean, you got to wait till the next time you water, right? And the next time you or you're going to have to go home, add a CalMag, add a microbes. But the question is, do you want to make a tea and then water? If you've overwatered, how do you want to do that application? Because you've already overwatered. So if you come into the store, the, and the next question that I ask you guys is, hey, what PPM were you at? Because if you overwatered, which means you're watering too frequently, you probably overfed. So your, your solution may very well be to make a tea with Clonex Root Maximizer Soluble and something like Botanicare Sweet or GH Flora Nectar and make a tea and then flush out everything that's in there and then just leave the tea in there. You could... You could make a tea, flush it out with the micro, uh, with, uh, with sweet, and then put a little splash of concentrated tea in each one because it's already wet. You should always worry about microbes. I mean, I don't know if Fox Farm has microbes in it. I mean, the soil probably does, but I don't know about the nutrients. I don't, there's a, there's a lot of product um, 
in terms of there's a lot of stuff that goes into a lot of product like it's really really tough to gauge all of those parts and pieces um see pjammer when i talk about five gallons bottled water from the store and flush the thing is you have to know the ppms because if you've been feeding at 500 you know what i mean unless you've been feeding at 500 every day in media I mean, it's not, you know what I mean? Like, what's a flush really going to do? But now you're feeding a little plant once a week. It, the things are building up. You start at 500. You add 500 to it. Your water starts at 500 like my tap. Then you add 500 to it. Suddenly you're at 1,000. Now you got an RO system. So your water's 30. So if your plants want 100 ppm, you can give them 70 ppm and they're at 100 but my tap water is at 500 if you add 100 to that you're at 600 or six times the amount Woo. um um az you're going to be able to uh do live chat with me and i, I we're going to minute i'm going to get a hangout and we're going to be able to put up a panel and you'll be able to send me you'll be able to live stream me your garden um, but you can also send me some pictures through email. I don't always get to them. They're like, you know what I mean? It's like callers. I try to get to as many as I can. Uh, the number is 84 grow boss. It's 945. The store is probably going to have to open in a little bit. Uh, I've got, I've got the front of my front door is open just in case a customer wants to walk in because, uh, the, <laughs> it's funny about Chernobyl P jammer. Dude, P Jammer's fucking funny. So I got the front door open, hoping I can convince someone else to come in on the show. But that's the idea about microbes. There is a difference in how to use them. Like, you don't have to put granular in, in a hole that you, when you do a transplant, if you water with a tea. But then you have to make a tea all the time. I like, I like granular because it's so highly concentrated. And it's just like they tell you to wash your hands. If you have good bacteria on your hands, it's harder for the bad bacteria to get hold. And if you have good bacteria on your roots, then it's, then it's harder for the bad bacteria to get hold. And just like this, just like this thing said, if, that'll cost you 10% or more of your product. So here's my quick observation. I've always said that microbes are worth 15%. It is light water CO2. These are light. Then you more then you move your light, a light mover, light rail light mover is 25%. And then CO2 is 25%. Because what's in the photosynthesis equation? Light water CO2. Nowhere in here do nutrients exist. Light water CO2. So more light, more CO2 gets you more yield. But more watering isn't going to fix anything. Nobody ever underwaters, you know? Okay. Dude, come on in the show, AZ420. I'll be here in December. Apparently, this is my desk. I've even got a little cubby hole right here. We took out the lights and we moved them over there. Okay, so that's the screen where I look at. These are the pots that we moved, and I'll show you the store in a minute. But those are those bulbs. Those are those four-foot eight-bulb T5s. I moved them over there. I slide my desk in here. Chuck now has access to the back. And, okay. Um... Oh, it's Vegas. It's so bright. Okay, so if this commercial, I've been saying once you add a light rail light mover and you add CO2, the only thing left is microbes, and microbes are worth 15%. Light mover, light rail light mover, 25%. CO2, 25%. Light water CO2, right? Even when you look at my uh, pictures, I think I even have, I think I even have this one. Uh nope not that one i think i even have this to show you um i thought he nope okay i think i still have it though this is this is whoops wrong side so i have this calculation here we go so i have this calculation that I do that tells you nope that tells you nope <laughs> good morning okay right here see this bulb light mover co2 okay there once you've told me the bulb the bulb starts at 100% but both of these items add 25% 
Why? Because light water CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. So if you have a 1,000 watt bulb plus a light mover plus CO2, you have 1,500 effective watts. Now, of course, yields based on plant health and, you know, and you have to have, you know, if you have a, if, if you only have 25% of your canopy filled, and I think I've shown this to you, if you only have 25% of your canopy filled, well, you're going to get 25% of the yield that if you looked, if you did that with it, remember that? Okay. But my point is, is that I could literally add microbes right here. You could literally just put like Clonex solution, 15% right here. I mean, Clonex uh, root maximizer right here. And the reason I tell you that is this, if it takes 10% away, then it adds 10%. I said 15. So there you go. I'm pretty close just from experience in the store. But if you think about it, if they take away 10 and you have 10 on the other side, dude, that's 20 plus or minus 10, which could be up to 20%. So 15% is right between 10 and 20%. So I'm right in the zone of what I'm telling you from what I see based on experience, not experimentation. That's why when, when, when Poppy, when Poppy asks about microbe, oh, hell yeah, because not only if you avoid the problem, do you avoid a 10% loss? If you do it right, you gain 10%, which is a 20% potential yield. And the problem is even harder to start, like any kind of in root infections, harder if the roots are being protected by microbes because they have a force field around them. That's why I tell you, microbes, not only, so you do like a, a hygrozyme, right? An enzyme. Okay, so it eats away the outside of the root, exposing new root so, root so the plant can continue to grow. Or it, or it eats away the infection, but it doesn't increase root growth. You know, the microbes live on the roots. They take sugar from the root. It's a symbiotic relationship. The microbe processes the root and the microbe expands the reach of the root because the microbe can reach even further. It's literally forming a hand chain to rescue a nutrient that would otherwise be unavailable. That's why I'm telling you like literally light rail, light mover, CO2 microbes, because the reality is if you use microbes, you're going to get more than without them. Here's Clonex Root Maximizer, trusted brand. There are lots of products in the store. I've got lots of products in the store. They don't all have, they don't all have the same amount of microbes, the same concentration of microbes, and the same variation of microbes. And it's just like nutrients. Oh, you're feeding 800? Oh, once a month? That's quite different than 800 twice a week. And so there's a big difference between these products. So I'm just cautioning you guys that you have to b know both, both the concentration. I tell you the same thing with nutrients. You have to know both the concentration and the frequency to gauge, to work this out with any type of success. I mean, you know that your tank holds 10 gallons and that you get 50 miles a gallon and that California is 400 miles away. I should be able to get there. But if you don't know how many gallons you put in your tank, how do you know? How do you know the frequency? If you had a five gallon tank, how many times do you have to fill up? I'm just suggesting that it's easy for somebody to say, uh, somebody, so I got a, 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 the hotline caller. My buddy told me to do four Gavitas. And I said, that's brilliant. As long as your room is 20 by 30 with a 15 foot ceiling and you're growing, you know what I mean? And they're all in one room. So you're going to veg and flower in the same spot. So you have to be able to get unlimited clones and you have to be able to. And so he's like, well, but I'm not doing any of that. And I go, well, how can you possibly use a Gavita? Oh, two, check out the motorcycle I bought. Oh, it's brilliant. How do you pick up three kids from school? So how long can you leave a clone in a four inch cube until it starts to suffer? I mean, asking for a specific date on something like that, it's a silly question. See what I'm saying? 719, what can I do for you? Good morning. Hey, Grow Boss, I got a design question for you. Okay. I've only ever uh, grown in like a tent before and I have a chance to upgrade to a 60 foot long trailer that is 11 foot wide. I have a room that is 11 foot by 44. I have a separate room that's a six by 10 and another room that is 10 by 10. I was just wondering what would be the best setup to maximize space. 
my ceiling height is also seven foot high. It's over Did for you. Did you get all that? Yeah, yeah, I got it for you. But you have a seven foot ceiling. So you tell me. If, if like, literally, like, here's the problem that you have. And this is the problem that I, I tell you guys every time. Every time. You have a seven foot ceiling. See that hood right there? That is a one foot hood. Right? See. You know, actually, I shut my computer off because uh, I got a little interference. Okay, that's fine. Phone, so I'm not watching you live. So but here I, are the I, buckets. I here are the buckets. That's one foot. So you have a one foot bucket. You have a one foot hood. Even if you buy a super sized hood, of which I have super sized hoods here for blowout, sick ass, cheap, brand new, no box hoods with glass for 75 bucks, but you got to buy two of them at 75 each. And I'll do, get them the fuck out of my store. Can see that hood? That's the hood. I don't care how big your hood is. The reality is a flashlight works great at walking speed. You might even be able to use a good flashlight on your bicycle, but you can't put a flashlight out your window at 60, can you? No, it doesn't okay. work like that. So my question is, how do you, <laughs> and, and this is the problem that, this is the problem that, and, and I, I don't, I mean, maybe you'll have an answer for me, but this is the problem that I, I always confront you guys with, and it's this. Here is a garden. Here is a garden. Okay. Oh, sorry. Here is a garden where the lights are four and a half feet away from the plants. How do you, I mean, think of, you know what I mean? Like, how do you solve that problem? Because this guy's got 14 foot ceilings, so he could clearly put them as close to the plant as he wants. And here is another component. Here is another part where you look at the look at the size of these plants and yet those lights are five feet away from the plants so you tell me how you put a five foot plant with a with a one gallon with a one foot bucket and a one foot hood in a seven foot room with a five foot distance so how do you want to maximize space listen man i i think I, you know, no disrespect, and, and I understand your point, but no disrespect, but I don't understand why the question isn't, why, why the question isn't like, I, when you say maximize space, like how can you maximize yield in that space? Dude. Okay, dude. you know, maybe m more my question is, would size lights, um, like 600 watt lights on a light rail, like how much light right. will fit in the room with the space. I know a thousand watts does a five by five space two feet deep. Now, will two thousand watts do ten by ten space two feet deep? Does that work the same way? It um, okay. So let's say that you were to get a super size hood and you were to move it. So you move it six feet. You put on a light rail. You move it six feet such that the edge of the hood ends up like two feet from the edge of the four by eight space. So the light goes down to the edge and then it moves back whatever it is you have two five by tens a thousand watts worth a pound and a half i, I don't care if, if you put it on a light mover you get 25 percent more so you get you approach two pounds with a thousand watt on a light mover now i say five by five if you want 25 percent more really what we're talking is a five by seven now if you want to thin the canopy down so you pull it further away from the light instead of doing five by seven two feet you're going to do five by nine 18 inches or five by 10 18 inches because if you look back at this plant right here these plant if you look back at these plants they are literally 20 22 inches tall but there's 15 per two lights and if you have there and underneath two lights is technically a four by eight. Now, I just want to point out that a four by eight table with six inches of bud hanging over each side is really a five by nine table. And frankly, a five by nine table is is equal to five by ten. So I don't care about that. But I would like to point out that if you do a five by ten space in an eleven foot wide, you can't put two tables in there because there won't be any room to walk. So you literally can only run one table after the other unless you're, you know, because you, remember, you're putting a four by eight table with a six inch overhang. That means you're in a five by 10 table. If you need one foot on each side, you are now in a seven by 12. 
Okay, so 7 by 12 for each 4 by 8 table. Suddenly, if you're in 7 foot wide and 11 foot space, what the fuck are you going to do? Now, you can't put anything at the... You know, you've got 3 feet on either side of the table. There's no way to put two rows in there because how are you going to walk around the plant it wouldn't be possible to get between them okay could you build three by six tables and do a thousand watt in like a four by seven space where you get a half foot of hangover on each side yes but i don't know if that's something that interests you doing two sixes because frankly if you put a six, you're going to get a thousand, I mean a pound. If you add CO2, you're going to get a pound and a quarter. So two six, two six hundreds is going to get you two and a half pounds. A thousand watt on a mover is going to be two pounds. So you have two lights. You literally have twice the setup for only 25% more yield. See what, I, see what I'm saying? Okay. <clears throat> yep. Okay. I want to point out that there's a difference, a significant difference there is a significant difference in the equipment that you're going to buy if you're a home grower growing for yourself if you're a home grower but gangster growing for more than just you and there is another level of equipment that you have to buy if you're commercial these are you do not buy a commercial oh shit i think i i think i hung up on you i am so sorry 502 what can i do for you Five three zero. Sorry, five three zero. What can I do for you? I had a question about the Humboldt Honey EF. Yes, sir. Um, I remember you saying that it was a good sweetener, but it looks like it doesn't have any mag sulfur in it. Okay. So Humble should I have got the Botanic Air Sweet instead? Okay. Let's see, Humboldt. Let me. Let me take. Let me just. Let's take a look at this together. And see what's in it because I was okay. going through I was going through a lot of images I was going through a lot of I was going through a, Humboldt honey as a pre oh here's why okay there are two components to okay I have I have a whew, I have a good answer for you my friend so I don't have to wheeze out of this one <laughs> okay I, there there is actually a difference when you look at these products here so GH makes GH makes these three products, Flora Bloom, Liquid Cool Bloom, and Flora Nectar, the sweet product. This has mag sulfur and sugar in it. This has PK and mag sulfur. This, oh, PK, right, PK and mag sulfur. This one has PK, no mag sulfur. So this has mag sulfur, no PK. This has PK, no mag sulfur. This has PK and mag sulfur. These two together make this product. However, this product by itself is usually known as a sweet. And a sweet product, whether it smells like Baywatch or it smells like uh, a pina colada or it smells like grapes or, or it says flora nectar or it says sweet or it says any of these things. If it has carbos in it, it's a sweet product. In lots of cases, for instance, you could just as easily mix these two and make this. Mag sulfur, carbohydrates, plus PK. This would make, well, the PK would, the PK would make, and the mag sulfur from here, plus there would be carbohydrates. So it's like this with carbohydrates. But you see my point. I mean, they make the same, you can combine them, to make the same product so it's easy to double up on something accidentally but then when we look at what it says is in the product it says premium blend of cane molasses yucca kelp and ocean fish <laughs> whatever humboldt honey es provides a food source for essential micro microflora with healthy soils so the molasses is the food source so you could put humboldt honey in with clonex root maximizer and some air a couple air stones and bubbling and make an active tea humboldt honey here provides you with the provides you with the oh it provides you with the microbes i mean the sugar and then so that's the relationship. In this case, Humboldt honey would be the sugar, and it's a food source like a mycochum from, from uh, Great White. So that's this product, but it doesn't have the microbes in it. See what I'm saying? 
Five three zero. So I would want to add some like mag amps to it or something. Say that again. So I, I would have to add um, mag sulfur with this, and this would just help the microbes eat the mag sulfur. Yeah. Listen. Finish. Yeah. You, you could. You could use this product. They also have. Uh, I, I don't think they have. I don't think Humboldt Honey has the mag sulfur, but. It puts it in an awkward, but yes, you would you would add mag sul. You'd have to add mag sulfur to this, but I don't know. I don't know of any mag sulfur product that doesn't have carbs. Maybe Bud Factor X, but if you look at the Bud Factor X label or the, um, or is it uh, Bud Factor X or Bud Bud Factor X? I think. Uh, you know what? Let's just look. I think. Uh, Bud Factor X label. I just want to point something out to you guys because I think Advanced Nutrients is like the smartest advertising company in our industry. And when we look at Bud Factor X, see how it says magnesium, but there's no sulfur derived from mag nitrate. I would just like to point out that there's no nitrate in it. So this is the only product on that. There's no N on it. It doesn't give you like an N, you know, like, okay, let's, uh, so it doesn't give you an N with it. So if you like, look at this, it says derived from mag sulfur. It has mag mm -hmm. 0.5 sulfur 0.5 on the label, but this is derived from magnesium nitrate. Uh, okay. Where's the nitrate though? Is there no nitrate? Is there is there 0.0001% nitrate? Show me something. So I just want to point out that this product is the only one in the entire store and in every nutrient I have ever seen ever that only has mag in it. So I don't know how to answer that one. But I could, your dilemma is if you use two products, you're ending up with twice the carbohydrates. So I don't know if you would stay with Humboldt Honey. You might just switch to a typical sweet like Mag so that's what I used to use, but by watching your videos, you kind of recommended the humble honey stuff. So I decided to try it. And when I got it home, I'm like, oh, this doesn't have any mag sulfur in it. So uh, I'm like, oh, did I miss something or get the wrong one? But I, no, I just, uh, no, listen, you have to take, <laughs> you have to take what I say to some extent with a grain of salt. If you're specifically looking for mag sulfur, humble honey is a great product, but if you want more mag sulfur, um, uh, you know what? For instance, Fox Farm. Well, I, I wait, don't wait, want let me give more. You an example. I just want. Wait, wait. Let it, me you give you an I mean? example. Like you have to have it, right? So. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, I, I will literally show you an example. Okay, here is one brand of nutrient, the Technoflora. They don't have a CalMag. Mm -hmm. They GH does. Um, they've got advanced has a sensi cow mag extra botanicare has a cow mag that's weird though fox farm doesn't have anything like that they got sure got a ton of shit like that though and you know what i mean there's a whole lot of nutrients there's no cow mag from humble i mean humble doesn't have one you look at coco a and b from uh from house and garden they don't have a cow mag there's lots of product lines Psycho. I don't even know if they have a cow mag, but they sure do have a lot of bottles. So I don't, you know what I mean? Like to some extent you have to, you have to keep in mind that not every, not every, not every product does everything well. For instance, Roots Accelerator, number one rooting product, Clonex rooting gel, number one rooting gel by a hundred to one. Ocean Forest, 100 to 1. Clonex Solution, Baby Food, 100 to 1. Mondi Domes, Trays, 100 to 1. Thermo Flow, 100 to 1, or you're going to burn your shit up because your ducting is going to fail. There are um, um, CalMag, number one selling bottle in my store. Fox Farm, number one selling nutrient brands I just push in my store because one grow, one bloom. One CalMag, one sweet. So. That's why I'm suggesting that, uh, that, that if your plant's not purple, it may not matter. You may find that your nutrient maybe has enough mag in it. You also have to remember that just adding stuff for the sake of adding stuff doesn't work either. You don't issue a treatment 
just because you want to do something. The really, again, the less you do, the more you get. So, I mean, that's as close as I can get from here. Okay. Um, I got one more quick question. Um, I'm going outdoors, so I've been just feeding them 1,000 ppm, but since, you know, the sun kind of on a light mover and I'm getting CO2 outdoors, should I add the extra 250 for each one? Does that make sense? Ask the me 250 again. ppm for the, oh. for the CO2 and for the light mover, but I'm outdoors. Um, so should I be feeding at 1,500 no, no, sir. I, no, sir. No, sir. Let me make this observation. What you should do is feed at 500, and then if it does, if it needs more, you should up it. You don't just up it because I'm saying so, because you have to determine what's the full size of the plant, how much ppm you're going to be then, and we don't, we're not, we haven't discussed how often you're watering. Because if you're watering every three days, you're going to feed differently than if you're watering every week. There's a concentration. Okay, and a well, free... the, the plant's 12 feet tall and I'm watering every three days. Dude, it's an indoor grow book. Like, it's an indoor grow book. How's the plant look? Okay. I just question it because <laughs> it the just plant... really, it doesn't say much about outdoor stuff that I'd ask you personally. Well, what I'm saying is if your plant looks good, uh, don't change anything. No, I'm just saying if your plant looks good, don't change anything. I just don't want to underfeed it. That's why I'm going to underfeed it. The nugs aren't going to get as big, you know. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let's just say that. Let's just say that that whatever it is, wherever you are right now, one thousand is is the perfect ppm. Let's just say it's a hundred ppm per week. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's ten weeks old. You're at a thousand. Let me ask you: if you feed it with a little too much every time, that will negatively affect impact. Uh, yield that will if you feed it with a mm -hmm. little too little it will negatively impact yield so no matter what you do you are going to negatively impact yield if you don't have the exact right amount agreed yeah okay since nobody can tell you the exact right amount because there nobody can tell you without you doing it taking careful notes and figuring it out, if nobody could tell you the right amount, the question I ask is, is it if you're known, it's going to, you can't by definition get the right amount, so you're going to be a little off. Would you rather be a little high or a little low? Yeah, a little low. I, I just, I always caution you okay. guys that you put too much, oh, listen, thanks for the call. I'm going to have to end the show in a minute anyway. Um, I always caution you guys, that you put too much emphasis on pushing your plant when you have no idea how little she really needs. Because if you can't get it right, I, I always tell you with nutrients, if you switch your nutrients because your buddy tells you that the other nutrients are magical, you know what I mean? Like, oh, GH is magical. House and garden is magical. Botanicare is magical. You should switch to Humboldt nutrients is magical. Remo nutrients is magical. Advanced nutrients Sensi grow is magical. Advanced nutrients connoisseur is magical because it's chelated more. Advanced nutrients jungle juice, cocoa is better. Advanced nutrients soil. Advanced nutrients, you know what I mean? Like Technoflora, NPK, uh, gr uh, GrowTech, DynaGrow. Miracle Grow, but Holio. All I'm saying is, a lot of fucking vehicles out there, and they're all the same fucking. Be Maybe not Chrysler because you never see a five-year-old Chrysler. That amazes me. But you get my idea here. That listen, if one of these nutrients are really better than the other, don't you think the others would be out of business by now? You see what I'm saying? Like, yo, there's only so many players that can be in the game. For instance. GH, if it's the magic one, then who cares if Monsanto makes it because they bought GH and Botanicare? Do you care if GH was the magic one? I know GH was the original, but what about Botanicare? Botanicare is now owned by the original. Does that make it an original too? They're both made at the same place. I mean, the raw ingredients, 
are the same thing. I mean, you know how they make GH, right? I mean, they advanced nutrients puts out that thing with the minotaur drinking the advanced nutrients and pissing out GH. So if Botanicare is at the same factory, did they get another minotaur? So, yeah, it's this finesse thing where it's always less than you think until it's not enough. And then you're like, fuck, there's the bottom. And the bottom is way lower than you guys think it is. It's less light than you guys think it is. Um, oh, okay. So uh, my favorite one on this, and I'm probably going to have to end the show soon. Oh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll tell you what the number one thing always is. 24 hours of light and veg. I veg my plants for 24 hours. And I'm like, yeah, but they make roots at night. Oh, but my bucket is full of roots. And I go, that's funny. Everybody else's bucket's full of roots. But they use 33% less light to get there. Because everyone else's lights are on for 16. You're on for, I mean, 18 you're on for 24. So you're literally using 50% more six, 33% more light to get the same roots. Because if you do this right and you're in the right bucket, you're not going to transplant until the roots are full. So it doesn't matter how long your lights are. The fact is that you have to, I mean, how many hours a day your lights are on? The fact is you have to pull it out of the bucket and judge how the roots are. And 24 hours of lights, if roots grow in the dark, 24 hours of lights doesn't necessarily get you more roots. So if you end up with the same amount of roots, a bucket full, is it really wise to, to spend 33% more on electricity and cooling, especially when the roots are made at night? You see my point? Like, it's such a, it's such a rookie move. Like, what are you going to... And if it takes 80 days, but there's no nights, is it one day? Is it... All I'm suggesting is that you could get in your car, start it up, Warm it up, and because you know you're going to get on the freeway to go to work, you warm it up, put it in sixth gear, and start driving. Why bother with first through fifth? Why bother? Why bother with first through fifth? Why do they put them in the car? Why don't you? Fuck, they put 10 gears in an automatic now. The minimum size bucket you would use for flowering in a two by four grow closet. Uh, it's based on veg. If you have a four week veg, you're going to go from a one to a three. If you have a uh, if you have an eight week veg, you're going to veg from one to a three and go into flower. What we're talking about is plant count. Okay. Um, all right. So I've got my first customer that's coming in the store. Good morning. Let me see. Let me, let me see. I don't think it's going to happen. Let me see. Hi. I know I'm doing a webcast right now. Yes. You know what? You're just swapping out a tank? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to come say hi to everybody? No. Just put 20 on the counter and we're good. Would you like a cold water? No, okay. What's your new show? Big diesel, cool diesel trucks. Nice. You can owe me 20 if you want. Oh, okay. Always a treat. Thank you. 
I have cameras. You have to stay right there, though. You can't come closer because this is all cameras here. There's cameras in the store and there's cameras in the back. Yeah. Yeah, there's nine monitors in the store and we're adding three more. I, the whole back is being redone as a giant display. All right, let me get back to my show. Take a cold. Oh, you got one. Ah, yes. All right. Listen, I have no idea. I may not have another customer come in for an hour. I just want to, I just, wanna, I, I, just I just always want to, okay, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to grab this fucking picture right now, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to, I'm going to open this, okay, I'm going to open this picture, um, I'm going to show you right now, and I'm probably going to have to end it with this, because I am doing the store, oh, damn it, I was going to try to do, guy, just start talking, I get phone calls, I was going to try to do, Ba 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 the uh, case studies on on uh, okay let's let's see uh, there's one, there's two pictures I'll get to really quick um, open with WinZip give me one sec I got two pictures I'll show you right here we'll just chew through them real quick because it's probably obvious ah and we got a call. Two five zero. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Grow Boss. This is Owen. I'm seeing your chat. How are you doing this morning, sir? Oh, you're the guy on the chat. Yes, sir. You are smarter. You are smarter than me. Good morning. I can't keep up. Hey, I've got a question for you about some of those CBD products that an FOG Kush had sent you from Hamgenics there. That cream you were using on your back there. Um, would you mind telling me what you were using that for? How did it work for you? And when that jar runs out, would you be buying more of it for yourself? Okay, that's an interesting question because I've been thinking about that because of how well it worked. I will tell you that it's a mixed answer because if I have that pain for that long, I can't. I have started taking one eighth of a Vicodin because the pain is spinal. I've had three spine surgeries, rods and pins. Does that alleviate the topical, visceral, the topical pain? Yes. Would it help with an organ pain like a swollen liver? Absolutely not. Would it help with passing a stone? I don't believe that at all. There are some things, and I'm telling you about the amount of Vicodin that I'm taking because I am scared to death of that addiction, both as a paramedic and watching it happen and seeing it happen on the news and everywhere. And so I am literally breaking it off. I only take it in the morning. I don't wake up. I try to walk my dog before I take it. I got to say, I've stopped stretching at night because the doctor was like, keep stretching. But I have had three spinals, so I've stopped stretching. I'm going to take a few more days to see it. But I got to tell you, if you are going to be in chronic long-term pain, this is not... This is not elbow pain or surgical pain from like a Tommy John or a tennis elbow. This is not why you wear the band. At what level do I repeat it? And when do I solve the problem? Because God damn it, I have been doing vegetables for the past 72 hours because you can't take morphine and have it with the stomach problems and, and not poop. And so I've been eating almost 90% vegetables. And I have to lose the weight because if my back hurts and I'm 40 pounds overweight. And that guy on the commercial on YouTube keeps pulling that giant fucking fat glob out of his pants. And I feel even <laughs> fatter. You know, the, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know the video. Okay. So when I was, when I, and I have them right here. And I have been using them. But there is a limit to the naproxen. Like, I, I'm, I'm not, oh, and starting Monday, when I'm not working the store on the weekend, I'm going to start taking some carisperidol in literally one-fifth the quantity, and I'm going to have to stop taking the one-eighth tablet next week. I can't, I can't, I have to try something else because it's been 10 days. So, now, did this stuff work on me? 100% yes, but there was a limit on what it could do. But there's a limit on the opiate as well if I want to use that responsibility. So I'm not saying that the limit on this product in any negative way. 
what I'm suggesting is, is that this product was fantastic, but it was limited in that there's some things it can't fix. What happens if I need surgery and another back, another back surgery? This isn't going to fix that and neither will opiate. See my point? Yeah. So what I offered last week is that there's some different, there's different types of pains. Your pain receptors in your fingers and arms are so visceral. That's why burns are so bad. And there are, if I have a swollen disc or the equinized part of my spine, the equinous nerves part of my spine are, are having a problem, this isn't going to do that. I have to relieve the tension. So I'm also carefully eating vegetables. Ugh. Even though I get them from the Thai food next door, dude, she's the best. And so here are the products that I'm using. And I was using the tinctures. But frankly, one eighth of a, one eighth of a 7.5 Vicodin with two naproxen in the morning and two in the afternoon carries me until 8 p 7 30 p.m when i go take ralph for his final potty dude that's a hell of a thing you have to know i mean this is i mean this is no different than growing cannabis you see my point there are you see my point in all fairness you see my point absolutely will i order more i don't know what's going to happen with my back at the moment I don't know. I've been feeling better the last few days, but I had surgical solutions three times already with a final laminectomy, laminectomy, disectomy with hardware put in rods and pins. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it's not off the table, but something to consider is the price of these on a long, on an ongoing basis is also prohibitive. So price prohibitive long-term addiction prohibitive on another one, both of those avenues come out with negative effects. So what's the one positive effect before I make a decision? Listen, you have to lose weight and go and see my doctor and we have to go do another back x-ray. See my point? Absolutely, yeah. But in all, in all cases, I would not like to underestimate my spectacular amazement at how well they worked. It was... <clears throat> It was like icy hot within minutes. I mean, listen, for all I know, it could be a okay. icy hot in there. But I will tell you that when I took the liquid CBD, you watched me on the show, you could, I look back in it and it was like, you know what I mean? I felt like I was like GHB. It was like immediately someone else. And with that, I think the CBD changed me in moments. Like I was a, if that was a patient in my ambulance, if I was a patient in my ambulance, I would have marked down significant improvement. You know what I mean? I would have felt so much better about my patient had I affected that treatment. So this kicked fucking ass. But then I don't know. I, I look at them and I go, who knows what's in them? I mean, like, it's not FDA stuff. Who knows what's in them? I, I don't know if it's going to shut down my kidneys like that chinese milk and that chinese dog food and the chinese supplements that you buy and who knows you know there's a lot of fear about that product too i, I they, you know so I, i'm I, I don't know if it's right for me i will definitely say i was pleased with the results and i don't know if i would buy more because i made an appointment with my doctor No, that's awesome. I appreciate your time very much, and you've given me enough information to know that it's some, a product I would certainly look at in the future. Dude, I would totally look at this product for a pain relief, a, a temper. You can't take you can't take naproxen. You can't keep taking Tylenol. I mean, there's only so much you can keep taking. So I am 100% with you. Okay, let's look because I'm gonna get fuck. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna get a customer here. I just can't keep dicking around like this. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go to the picture cam. Okay, let's look at that picture on the left, and then let's look at that picture on the right, and and let's just let's just all give a collective gasp. <gasps> Dude, this is okay. Let's just again. Let's just be aware. You are ninety ninety five percent. Of your light is hitting soil and what happens when 95% of your light hits soil oh shit your plant gets too much and it has too much light and you get little tiny plant with really small space between the nodes okay you look at this plant maybe 
We don't know anything about it. There wasn't anything in the email. But that was that. All right, let's take a look at one more. We got this picture here. Ooh. Yeah, gray spots, black dots, highly high probability thrip, but there is definitely not conclusive because it's a little more brown than gray. However, it's starting to get a little gray, but okay, so here's the thing, like, like right, okay, let me change shape, like right through here is you can see gray spots, but right here it's necrosis. So the necrosis says it could be two things. The spots right here says it could be something else because I see the spots over here and here and here. So it could be, I mean, I'm not seeing overwatering because it doesn't look too purple on the stem. It's not too puffy. It doesn't look chicken clawed. So let's open up one more picture and see if we can get a little closer to it. Nope, that's not his picture. This is probably his other picture. Okay, so again, we see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all of those squares. So we see 10 times as much floor as we do plant. Plus it looks like it's over, plus it looks like, uh, plus it looks like it's, it looks like it's uh, overwatered. Whew, got a little bit of uh Got a little bit of a case studies in. There we go. See how there. See how the that leaf is curved down and it's ma like this. So first off, we know that all of this, all of this, all of this doesn't have plant. Well, okay. So yeah, okay, okay. So all of this, all of this, all of this. I, I hated finding the area under the curve in calculus and I hate doing it now all of this so basically the only thing <coughs> that has uh, that has uh, plant is this and this okay where are we going with this what's happening here all right yeah all right let's smoke one more bowl I will say goodbye to all you guys and uh, love the case studies, right? Yes. So let's say. Um, Bah! God, I get the feeling that uh, that the caller was uh, grow was God, hemp genics it was like a hemp genics rep. It felt like like I was lobbed that one. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, this is a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, we all, th th I'm on the other side of, of being healthy. It's a, it's a different mentality. You have a different respect for people. You have a different respect for what goes on around you. Oh, you know what? You guys want to take a tour of the store? Pain is weakness leaving the body. Um, uh, that's funny because pain for me is keeping me up at night. My kid tells me that shit too. And I'm like, as soon as you tell me anything other than, woo, I know that. I know you're a young pup. You're the bull on the hill that's going to run down and fuck you a cow. <clears throat> I remember looking at my buddies growing up who were 20 years older than me because we built stuff. And I was like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Run down there and fuck a cow. Run, walk down there and fuck them all. What are you talking about? I'm just saying that there's, there's, there's never one right answer. It might be another mattress. It might be 40 pounds, five pounds of fuck fat. You won't know what's keeping you guys down. He pulled. <laughs> God, that just squeezes my so fucking hard every time he does it. Because it's me. It's probably you. It's America. <clears throat> All right. Let's see.
Okay. Cleared out. Okay, so you guys, you guys remember the, you guys remember there was a huge amount of inventory. That's the back door. There was inventory everywhere. There was even inventory down there on those shelves. Okay. Cleared out a lot of inventory. Have had these shelves made for me up here. I've had shelves made for the ultimate. I've had shelves made for the ultimate ROs. More shelves over here. I've got, I'm, dude, I'm going to light this place up with displays. <clears throat> I'm going to make the hugest displays right there with everything in them right in that. I'm going to have it wood framed so it looks like a bedroom. I'm going to do it like, dude, like everything else you guys see me do. I'm just going to do it stupid style and way too much. Okay. <clears throat> because I'm the grow boss, right? Like I'm going to make a three light rotation. I'm going to turn those shelves into cubby holes with different lights in them. And so I've got all my storage up here. We're going to be able to open that back door. This stuff will all be on the shelves and I'll be able to keep the back door open. Uh, I'll be able to keep that back door open. Even at night, we'll be able to just secure the secure with a gate. I'll put a hydroponic sign up ba out back and then I'll put a couple of TVs back there so I can see what's going on during the show. I bought a way better wireless mic system so everybody is on the same mic. The problem Chuck's having is, see these trays up here? They're supposed to go in my little stage area. But then people can't get back there. So I took the lights that were in that space and now that space, that space, and it gets my table and now those lights are now over here. I moved the Grodan stand and then it opens up into the tunnel. That's a hallway because it's above ground. But I prefer the tunnel. I'm going to put another TV up in that corner. <clears throat> a couple more TVs out in the out in the uh, out in the dis out in the display area. I've got new cameras for my, you know, for that little table so I can start mixing nutrients. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's coming along super nice for the, uh, for my new. So we got our, you know what I mean? I got a couple of my grow boss shirts up, some track lighting in the ceiling to light up the product that's on the shelf. All the shelf is coming through. The soil aisle looks good. In fact, we don't even have all the soil up front anymore because we're going to start keeping some of the stuff out back. I'm going to line the back of the store with soil stuff. Oh, so the air stones were in the back of the store. Now they're up front. These are all the nutrients. Ah, yes. So much product in the store. Um, um, did I get any used stuff? Uh, I don't think I really got any used stuff this week it's been super slow this week like half business speed oh you know one of the other things is like i always worry about gluten because i could literally be having the pain from oh dude i could literally be having like it seems similar in some ways to that gluten pain i get from the chemical that they've been the desiccant that they've been the monsanto desiccant they've been spraying on the wheat on the wheat <laughs> oh yeah yeah i heard six fifths of the people are bad at fractions dude i love that wait till you see i got some lights coming for the back i'm just going to set it up like super display so i can walk back there and show you guys like you know, like one, two, and three light rotations, how to set up a full room with a vent, without a vent. So I'll have a lot of product I'll be able to set into like a little scene. What'll, you know what will happen is you'll come into the store and it's like going to school, right? You go to school for math class. Oh, you watch a teacher do it. Dude, you could totally do this. You go home and you're like, what the fuck did he do? And then I'll go to, you'll go to the back here. You'll buy all this equipment. You'll take it home and you'll be like, what the fuck? It looked great in the store. Be <laughs> boxes of equipment. Ha! Ah, I got Light Rail to come on as an advertiser, so I'm gonna 
you know, in the in the webcast too. So I'm gonna have a little light rail, light mover move in. Um, the shop looks way bigger. The shop is way bigger. And this, the stuff in the back is up front at the moment too. We won't even have this stuff up front. I'm hoping to be able to keep the whole center of the back open. So literally we could do like a school back there. You know, you can watch me draw on something or something or something. But we got cameras going back there. So I'll be able to walk back there in front of a camera. And we have, more, you know, cameras coming up here. Ah, yes. Um. So I don't know what to uh, say about, like, you know, there's cannabis in for, because I'm going to have to close up in a minute. Next customer that comes in, I'm going to have to close up. But I don't know what to say. Like, I've been doing those cannabis information network things. Um, I really haven't seen any of you guys actually create anything. I know we were talking about it, but it never seemed to, uh, it never seemed to go anywhere. I mean, I've been producing stuff, so I was kind of wondering if you guys had any opinions on it, if you want to type something up. Okay. Yes, Project Grow House. Dude, I, listen, I'm hoping Project Grow House shows up. I got so many vendors that want to pay me money. You know what the problem is? The problem is, one... Anybody can grow cannabis. That part's super fucking easy. I'm the only one with the store. So, yes. Uh, you know what else gets big responses is those comparison videos that I do. Where I put up a bunch of products. I'm thinking maybe we bring somebody to run a bunch of comparisons for us. So I don't have to do the work and we do more product comparisons. Because that's something I can do. Anybody can grow cannabis in a house. I just don't want to grow cannabis. Oh my God. I just hate growing cannabis. It's so slow. It's so small compared to taking the show national compared to. Oh, I know I need to get sponsored by Logitech and I just bought dude. The camera things drive me fucking nuts. Okay. Um, Uh, I don't want to talk to my webcast guy because he told me we could do it. And this morning I came in and it and it didn't seem right. But he may have a trick. He's a pretty smart fucking guy. You know, he shows up. The guys, when I used to show up to do consulting, it was 100 bucks an hour. Come out, fix whatever it was. It didn't matter. It was always the same. T Listen, doing computer consulting was always the same thing. My kids listen to it in the car so much they would be like oh tell them to set their address ip address to 192.168.0.1 and they would say it right along with me while we were sitting in the car i mean it's a nine and eleven year old that we would ditch school and go and build computer networks at at people's offices and they'd be like are you sure your kids are supposed to be here and i'm like yeah it's a holiday <laughs> Yeah, so, ah, oh, dude. Oh, oh, last night, my webcast guy was here. I wasn't trolling you. Um, we ran a test on the system. So today, my stream health is yellow. Yesterday, it was green. The test that he ran on the system sent out, I got, I got a text on, and it said, hey, are you doing a show? Yeah, I like Logitech too. I think those 270 cams are fantastic. I like these 910 cams. I mean, these 920 cams. But suddenly, I don't know if it's the test that he ran or the 920 cam is sending more data or what. But today I have a yellow stream. See, Albert, I used to love growing dope too. I love selling it. I love growing it. I love the whole thing of it. I'm just saying there aren't things that you do anymore when you get older and you change. And, you know, there really aren't too many 20 year, you know what I mean? 20 year grow dope. You guys all may all may know one, but I'll tell you, I know 10,000 people who failed. I've been doing this a long time. So I'm just saying there are very few long termers. Very few. I mean, it's not like baseball players you can't name three long term growers. I mean. Main cam resolution is markedly worse. 
damn, because that main cam is one of the new 920s. Uh, I got yellow stream. Dude, P Jammer is so fucking funny. Uh, yeah, see, you guys are in it for the long haul, but but the, in, in it for the long haul, does that mean like you're going to go to a facility? Because there are really a couple types of growers. They're the ones who just want to save all that money, buy some inexpensive light, do this pretty easy, and get some for yourself. I mean, that's a two light rotation. Then there are some of you that want to learn as fast as you can. I signed up for a computer school, 10 G's. I got my money back the next day. I, no, 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 no. I was, went home. I just did it in half the time, passed all the tests, and I was teaching at the school by the time the other guys were graduating, and I don't really think they understood what was happening. Of course, I just downloaded the brain dumps, memorized every question and answer and why, and then I knew every question and answer and why, and then whenever there was a problem, I knew every answer why. So it's tough reading a book and trying to pick out what the fuck you need. Questions and answers, questions and answers. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Ten, same 10 problems. No matter what you do, get out of my ambulance, same 10 problems. Get on a computer network, same 10 problems. Get on a cannabis thing, same 10 problems. Well, I mean, 10 problems for cannabis, 10 pro you know what I mean? Like you show up on scene, there's only so many things. You know, it doesn't matter where you got shot. Gunshot is gunshot. You know what I mean? So I've got this store. I've got all the equipment. You know what? Oh, you know what? Maybe what I'll do, Project Grow House, maybe what I'll do is I'll have somebody come in and grow and then, and then we'll just set up cameras and live stream it, like put it on a private channel or something like with a subscription. So like a buck a month or something and live stream it, live stream the work about it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to incorporate that into the Grow Boss platform without creating a huge amount of work for me. But I'll tell you what I will do, because it, it's really not crystallized with my product. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm a store. I'm a book. Um, I'm educational. For me to do, you know what I mean? Like, I get paid by creating great content. Anybody can grow cannabis. God, I just. <laughs> the thought of growing cannabis, it just makes my face itch. What's the deal of the day? Dude, I have got super size hoods. If you buy two super size hoods, you can have them for 75 bucks each. You can have super size hoods for 85 bucks each. That's new in box, but the box got wet. It comes with glass, eight inch. Dude, the big super size hoods, like the Raptors, but not a Raptor. But it's hinged. Hinged. Super size. Hinged. Super size hood with glass in the back of my store. Back your shit up. I got 30 of them. You can take them out that back of the store. Ah, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen, you want to know something you want to know, like, like we talk about like throw punch. You say how hard it is to get punched. I mean, uh, um, you, you, you say it's how you keep getting back up. Oh, dude, one of my favorite videos is always like, I mean, it's undeniable. It's, it's dude. Give me one sec. be dreams yesterday <coughs> you said tomorrow so just do it make your dreams come true just do it some people dream of success while you're gonna wake up and work hard at it nothing is impossible you should get to the point where anyone else would quit and you're not gonna stop there no what are you waiting for do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Best part, right here. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. 
All I'm saying is, I got a channel to put some content on. <laughs> if you guys want to start taking the Cannabis Information Network to a new level, I use it for my advertising. So I'm paid. I'm paid to do it. I send it out to the vendors. I send it out to the stores. I sell more books on the back end. So my investment pays me to do it. But I'm just saying, if you're tired of starting over, stop quitting. That's always funny. Dude, I just, I just, I just love that. So we're doing a couple things. I'm going to start. I like the idea of doing Project Grow House. I just, for me to go and try to grow something, I, dude, it's just, I, I'm not going to bend over to tie my shoes today. Like, how am I going to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not, it's just probably not in my deck of cards for, uh, to, 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 can I wire Project Grow House for the cameras? Can I narrate it for us? Yes. So uh, a competition, dude, you guys want to do prizes? You want a competition? Like the, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I know every vendor. I am getting paid to set up the back of my store so I can do a better demonstration for customers and on my webcast. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to have super high-end product here. I'm going to get a BioWave. I am not going to get a BioWave. <laughs> not if they send me a bio wave i'm not gonna get a bio wave i just always remember that episode of of x files where uh daryl his head exploded because of the bio wave and the anyway that's why i think it works so yeah what i mean we can't just people can't just send me pictures and write because i could download pictures so we can't do that you guys want prizes fuck i got prizes like you guys want money? How about I'll pay you for content? You win. I win. The channel wins. I didn't even realize you left. Oh, dude, it's 11 o'clock. Oh, you went and got wood? Oh, you need the key? Oh, dude. I'm going to take all the metal off the shelving. I'm going to cover it in wood. I'm going to make a couple of those compartments look like rooms. So when you're looking at it, it looks like a room and you're like, oh, I get this. Oh, I'm going to open up the equipment. We're going to set it up. It'll be like an outside inside part. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I can't believe I can't believe I'm still on with you guys. Oh, my God. You guys are still here. Dude, you guys want t-shirts? Uh, listen, I can get them to you for, I mean, they're 10 bucks on this. Uh, dude, you want to fudgy the whale cake? Oh my God. Fudgy the whale cake. Ice cream, lots of ice cream, crunchy crookie, crunchy crunchy cookie, more ice cream. Oh. Um, I think what we're going to end up doing is, uh, like I'm going to end up doing like uh, the, uh, the, I cannot, I hate that. Can't remember the name. The, uh, the review, the, uh, cookie pussy. What's the thing called? We're just going to, we're just going to review other people's grows. The, uh, uh, I keep forgetting what that word is. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm going to get a panel so you guys can come and log on if you want. You guys will be able to live stream me some video. I mean, if you live stream me video. Oh, no, Ralph's. Uh, I, I, I would assume Ralph's probably outside the uh, Ralph's probably like out the front door. There's a. Uh, oh, nope. Ralph is uh, Ralph is behind the counter. See his little head right there passed out behind the counter on the floor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come and buy supersized hoods for me. That would be brilliant. Supersized hoods would be brilliant because I got, dude, I can't wait to show you guys what the back looks like. Like, that is a disaster all by itself. Mm. It's my job. <sighs> <coughs> I 
So I like the idea of like a 24 hour live stream where we, where we do a grow in a house. <coughs> um, I'm going to start incorporating plants. Like I'm going to get a, like a plant. I'm going to do a cut down, a take down into some Clonex rooting gel. And I'm going to show you the one month process that's going to, oh yeah. You know what? <laughs> Apparently I've got a minute cause business has been slow. Oh, why am I doing that? I should be doing this. Give me one sec. Okay. Nope. This one. Yep. Okay, check this out. The, so we, I've got the clone, I got the kit coming together. Like I've got the parts and pieces. We've got the box that we're going to ship it in. I've got the clone kit. You know what I mean? The whole thing's coming together. So literally like I'm going to take this whole thing. There'll be 50, there'll be 50 of these. I don't know if you need, you probably aren't going to get a whole kit like that. You're probably just going to get like some, you'll get a couple of these. This will pro this and this will probably be in the deluxe kit. The thermostat and the, this will pro and the heat mat will probably be in the deluxe kit. I'm trying to work a deal with them. Uh, it comes with everything. You know what I mean? Like the 50 count. We may send you a tray that includes the Clonex gel. You'll get Clonex gel. You'll get their Clonex. Clonex Solution, Clonex Root Maximizer, Clonex Rooting Gel. You'll get a green pad, a scalpel, a couple of stickers because you'll need to tape this dome to this tray. And then it'll have a, it will have a, it will also have a, I had to open it up. It will also have a Mondi Hygro meter in here. So I've got like the whole kit and then we'll literally just cut down a plant See, that camera is slow now. Mm. So we're literally just going to cut down a plant. And uh, I'll just do it live. You know what I mean? We'll do a live stream. I'll make a video from it. And then I'll just sell that kit straight off of like QVC. Oh, do I have some outdoor tangerine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. P-Jammer. Yeah, yeah. That outdoor tangerine. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck brought in a, a little container of weed. I had no idea, right? So I'm sitting here working and P-Jammer's out back moving stuff around and I'm sitting here doing my computer stuff and I'm not smoking a bowl. The bud's in a little tray, so that's not anything new. And all of a sudden it's coming through like somebody stepped on an orange. You know what I mean? Like a smash video. And uh, P-Jammer's coming in and uh, he's like, are you looking around? Like what? You know, and I'm looking for it too. And finally I asked Chuck, it was, a, it was a little, it was this, it was a jar like this. <laughs> and I had, I had two grams in there. <laughs> when I say there's no difference be between bud, I don't necessarily mean that there's no difference, that all bud's the same. I'm just saying that great bud is great bud. And that the light that you use is only a tiny portion in the entire scheme of what goes into the best of the best bud because you can't have any problems. Apparently you can't have nematodes and all sorts of things along those lines, right? Woo. Um, let me give me one sec. Good morning. Um, okay. I think I'm coming to the end of my voice. I really can't do two hours, two days in a row. Here's the Clonex gel. You'll get Clonex gel. You'll get the Clonex 
Photonic Solution, Conex. Yeah, so why? That's a weird video glitch. Okay, I'll have to. I got my webcast guy coming tonight. That they tell me that's the that's the charm of the show. <laughs> Is like you know what I mean? Like it's real, dude. It's you and me getting high apparently. But we're gonna start turning into. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, a quite a bit different. We're gonna take quite a bit different route, and we're gonna do some super intense news, and you know intense news stories like. Uh, Anybody hear about Fukushima lately? You know, how about some seriously like combining like I've got a little uh, rad detector, a little radio, de little uh, radiation detector. You know what I mean? If Fukushima is in the water, how come it's not in our fish yet? So I'm kind of curious if you know I mean, like, let's let's take a walk through Costco or supermarket and let's see if there's some radiation in the fish. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the planet used to seem really big, but we have outsized it quite a bit so i'm always like uh but we got some time i think before it all comes crashing down you know the stock market guys are predicting september 23rd is doom day stock markets predicting of all the uh the, like the kenji curve or whatever it is that it's all coming down september october this year but yeah yeah okay um, I'm going to go do my thing in the store. Listen, I appreciate you guys. Store is looking pretty good. I, I, you know, I always appreciate that you guys are interested. And uh, we'll get more into some uh, case, uh, the, the, the cold case. No, not cold case. Damn it. Case, the analysis, the, the plant, and uh, whatever. All right. My brain's fried today. I'm tired. I'll speak to you guys later. With the law, since the day they was born. Ships are ground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, a skipper too, a millionaire and his Like a true modern day Robin Hood.